In the previous two videos, I used SQL Alchemy 2.0 to define four model classes, connect to a SQLite database, and insert fake data. If you haven't watched those videos yet, check them out first. In this video, I'm going to run queries against the fake data using the SQL Alchemy select function and show you both the generated SQL statement and the resulting data. As usual, I'm using VS Code and Copilot to help me along. We'll start with getting all customers just to get our feet wet here and see what Copilot suggested. Session.querycustomer.all. This is actually considered the old way of running queries. And you can see that in Miguel's blog post where he compares old way of doing queries with new way of doing queries. So we're gonna show Copilot an example of the new way and it should learn. So instead of this, I'm gonna say query equals select customer. And then I'm going to get the results of that query. And then from that results, I'm going to get the scalars and I can do dot all. Okay, so let's break this down. Like first we're using the select function and we do need to import it because we don't have it yet. So let me import select and here we go. Now we've got that select function. And so here we're just passing in that we're going to select the entire customer table. And then we pass this query object into session.execute and that'll give us back results. And there's a lot of things we can turn those results into. The first thing I do is use this dot scalars method and I can do that because I'm selecting a single kind of object. I'm selecting customers. So by default, this is returning rows. But when I know I'm only selecting a single type of object, I can do dot scalars. And now I'll get back a bunch of customer objects instead of row objects. And then I can do dot all to turn that into a simple Python list. So this should end up giving back a Python list of customer objects. Let's see if that worked. We're just gonna print out the results and execute this. Here we go. You can see lots and lots and lots of customers because we've been running this a bunch of times with all kinds of names. So we've shown Copilot an example and hopefully it understands what we're trying to use this way of running queries. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try a filter, right? So get all customers from the US. Uh, so we'll do query equals select where customer.country code equals US. That looks nice. And then once again, we're gonna execute that and print the results and see the customers from the US. You can see there's actually not that many and most of them are named customer zero through nine. <laughs> That's cool. That means the rest of our customers are from all over the place. Now let's find out where they're from. So select a list of countries grouped by country code. Okay, I wanna see all the countries represented. Okay, it wants to import func. And here's the query. So select customer.countrycode, func.count. Oh, so it's gonna include a count. That's really cool. It's not necessarily what I asked for, but that's actually even better. And then group by customer.countrycode. Cool, 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 cool. And you see this time it didn't do dot scalars. And that's because we're not returning back a single kind of object. We're returning back a integer followed by another integer. So we can turn it into a Python list, but we can't call scalars on it. So let's print out those results and see what they look like. All right, so here we see a bunch of tuples with the countries and their counts. Quite a lot of countries, really exciting. Now let's go ahead and play with related data. So let's start with one-to-one, -one, right? So let's say select customer name with credit card number. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. So let's see what that looks like. So query, customer name, credit card number, and we're joining with credit card. That looks reasonable. And we're gonna execute that and turn it into a list and then print the results. Okay, look at this. This looks like customer names with credit cards. Now let's try a one-to-many relationship. So I want to select customer name with their number of orders. How about that? Uh, so here we see customer name, func.count, so using that func module, func.count ordered ID, so joining with order, and then group by customer.name. Grouping by the name doesn't seem particularly good, so probably what we should do is customer.id, group by customer.id, uh, because we could have two customers with the same name. And then we're gonna go ahead and execute that and print the results. So there we see 
lots of customer IDs with their number of orders. Cool. So here you can see an example of creating a bunch of SQL Alchemy 2.0 tables using the new declarative base class and using the map columns here so that we get good type checking and then doing queries down here, you know, after we set up all that nice fake data, doing queries using the select function and executing that on the session. And, you know, there's a lot going on in this dev container file. You're welcome to just take it from my public repo if you're hoping to set up a very similar environment in your VS code. And there you go, a little taste of SQL Alchemy 2.0. I'm not an expert myself, but I learned a lot making these videos. And I hope that you now feel more confident using the latest version of SQL Alchemy in your own Python projects. If you have any follow-up questions, post them below. If you've already been using SQL Alchemy 2.0, then I'd love for you to share tips in the comments. And if you like these videos, please like and subscribe.